in this moment that he was drumming, I felt connected to everybody in the room. And that's quite a big deal when you're eight years old. I saw us all as one. I saw us all as being one beautiful community, one beautiful world. So that was the spark. Welcome back to 10,000 Heroes, your go-to podcast for inspiration and inquiry into what a life of purpose and fun is all about. My name is Ankur Shah Delight, and our project here is to facilitate, to midwife the birth of an entire generation of people totally aligned with their purpose, their contribution, because that's what I think we're going to need to survive. And my guest today is Zarina Wolf. Humble and hilarious, Zarina moves me over and over again with her story of how she got deep, and I mean real deep, into drumming and rhythm, and how that rhythm work connects to her mission of bringing people together. So the end of this episode features a rhythm meditation with Zarina that is quite profound and immersive. Do not do it while driving. There's a link to a YouTube video in the show notes if you prefer to see the video of that part, which I would definitely do. And as always, we love hearing from you. So drop us a line, leave us a voicemail, hit us up on Twitter, watch that video of the meditation, let us know what you think. All the links you need to do that are, surprise, surprise, in the show notes. All right, let's jump in, Serena Wolf. I'm actually honored that you feel a little bit anxious because um, it's my podcast and it's not the biggest podcast in the world. But you're still anxious. So that's like, that's nice. It's nice for me to hear. <laughs> well, it's a really wonderful podcast. I'm really excited for you. I, I just want to share with you that I've been in a sort of self-imposed sabbatical for a little while. Um, it started in July when I hurt my wrist and I needed to take a month off. But then it set up a whole question about who am I? And uh, I realized that my identity had been based on my, I had just been like a, a hamster in a little wheel and just had been doing so much for the last, I've been a drummer for 30 years and then I spent 12 years learning the rhythm process and then I spent another 12 years disseminating that information all over the world or wherever I could go to do that. And so the question of like, who am I is really what is kind of like informing my life right now. And um, so it's a very interesting thing to be, I, I can feel the the nervousness is uh, because I don't know who I am right now. You know, I mean, I know who I am in, in essence. I know that I will return at some point to teaching classes, but right now it's like, kind of like a self-imposed sabbatical. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And I think we've already just begun. So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to ask you, I was going to ask you a question about rhythm, but given what you just shared, maybe I should ask you about some of your recent findings in the direction of who you are. Well, it's kind of an interesting thing. I mean, I've been a, an achiever, a very, very high achiever, most of my life. And and I see that my brothers, I have two older brothers, they have that same drive that I do. You know, and then in, in other words, if we didn't do something really important in the day, there was a sort of an inner critic that was saying, well, what's wrong with you? Every, every day. And uh, it kind of, when you have a passion, which I, I do for rhythm and drumming, it's very easy to kind of like go into the passion and and not feel driven but there reached there w was a point where i started to realize that i am working very hard to try to make something happen in the outside world um make my uh, you know there's a, always been a part of service about it where i i really feel that Teaching drumming and the call to teaching drumming was something that I saw as a cure for relations, for community relations. I mean, I really, really, really felt 
when I first got turned on to drumming, and here's the story about that. I'm going to just go take way around. So I was about eight years old, and at my elementary school, there was a cultural enrichment thing, and it turned out to be this drummer, this guy over here, who came to my elementary school, and I saw God. And it wasn't him. I saw, what I saw was, what I saw and felt, and I still feel it, is this feeling of unity. In this moment that he was drumming and he was sharing this rhythmic message, I felt connected to everybody in the room. And that's quite a big deal when you're eight years old. Um, I felt so connected to everyone that I saw us all as one. I saw us all as being one beautiful community, one beautiful world. And um, so that was the spark. That was the spark. And then life happened and there was no drumming at that time. There were, there, were, there is now, there is availability for, you can go, go online and go dr hand drums and 9,000 things will show up. But, you know, I was living in suburban New York and there was no drumming. It was nothing like that. So, so this guy was like a, a meteor, some kind of like alien inspiration from outer space comes to your school a unique experience absolutely he came to my school his album had just come out his first album drums of passion had just been released and his deal was he was always a very big on on education and kids being taught he felt that children are the destiny of the of the way the world is going to go so bring bring mm. rhythm to the kids bring 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 the the true vine to the children because they're going to get it. And so that was his deal with Columbia Records was, you got to get me in the schools. I just happened to be lucky enough to be one of the schools that he went to. And so there's this spark. I got my parents to buy his album. I told them I wanted to be a drummer. That was just kind of like, oh, here's a guitar. So they were supportive of music in general. They weren't like, no, you're just going to go and program in Fortran, or whatever was popular back then. <laughs> there was no Fortran. <laughs> um, they were sort of supportive, but they weren't like, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. It's like, because there was no thing to get. There was no reality that was about people getting together and drumming, except in ethno-specific cultural situations, like in Cuban music and Puerto Rican music and Bembe and all of that, but that was happening in a cultural context. So there was no large scale community, quote, drum circle or anything like that that you could plug into. So I just bought his album. I remember I danced around to his album my whole childhood and, and played, learned how to play guitar and did other things. And then when I was 40, I met him again. I went down to Esalen. I, at that time I was, uh, I was a body worker um, and esthetician, and I went down to Esalen for a workshop with a guy named Fritz Smith, and um, there was Baba Olatunji. There he was. <laughs> You're like, I've waited 80% of my life for you. I didn't even know it. I mean, I, I just saw him, and I just felt like I was meeting the Beatles or, you know, just think of the most famous person you want to meet, Gandhi. I don't know. You know, it was just like somebody who w had informed uh, an inner world in me, you know, uh, of of an appreciation of music and rhythm that I I was just like, wow, there there you are. And he's he's amazingly diplomatic sort of very charming guy and he he said oh come to my workshop in march i'm doing a workshop here at esalen in march come come i'll teach you how to drum you know wow you know and and uh i thought oh man I, i'm gonna be good at this i figured oh, i'm gonna be really i'm gonna rock this world and uh i went down to the workshop and what he did and what I love is that he broke it into three distinct parts. One was 
drumming, but drumming and learning how to sing and drum at the same time, which is very cultural. And then dancing, but also learning how to sing and dance at the same time. And then singing by itself. And then he did a lot of storytelling. He's a magician. You know, he would weave these stories that would make the rhythms come to life. So I sucked. That's the bottom line. <laughs> I, got to, I thought I was going to know. I'd already, I'd been a dancer. I'd been, you know, a musician, you know, a little bit, you know. I've been performing since I was about 14, you know, folk music and Oh, all that kind of stuff. So I, I thought, oh, I'm, and I've been an actor, and you know, so it, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to knock this one out of the ballpark. And I sucked so badly that I think that if I hadn't sucked so bad, it never would have prompted me to go toward it with such fervor. I mean, I was just like, I'm going to get this thing, you know, and. um I was surprised at how disassociated I was. I was like, wow, this is really interesting. I'm like not in rhythm. I know how to dance. I know how to do this. I know how to play guitar. I don't know how to do this it's because it was a new language. So from that point on, uh, that was in March, like 1989, I became his famous student, you know, a famous student in the sense that I was always with him where whenever he was in the, whenever he was in California, I was with him. And I had a young kid at the time, about the same age as your daughter. And so I couldn't, I actually asked him if I could go on the road with him. And, but then I realized I'm a mother. I couldn't, I couldn't really leave home. What I have to say about him is that he really saw my passion. He really saw that this was igniting me. And he just said, okay, little girl, come on. And took me by, by the, you know, the arm and said, yeah, uh, you want to learn? I'll, I'll teach you. So when I, when I became the second year I was with him, I, I start, I said to him, I want to be your, your student. And he said, well, then you sit here. And he, he would put me, in the front of the classroom, there's 75 people in the room, and I'd be sitting in the front next to him. And uh, you want to talk about a trial by fire, where your teacher is examining everything you're doing. But it was such a, I mean, I'm looking at it now, you know, from this, it was such an amazing, amazing experience. It was, um, it was not easy. Uh, first of all, you know, obviously, you know, if we're listening to this on a podcast, I am white and Jewish. And from a middle class culture, I don't know anything about what it's like to have brown skin um, or black skin, you know. And yet there was something in me that was so drawn to this that you couldn't take me away from it. It was like that became my entire life, that became my entire focus. So for the next um, 14 years, I was with him. And that it required great inner strength um, because even though he welcomed me, I was not welcomed by everyone. And that's not a bad, sad story. That's the truth. I walked into somebody else's culture. So I became what I think is that there are people in, 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 uh, the, the white world today that are bridgers. And I feel like that became my job was to be a bridge to the African culture. And he certainly imbued me with that. He, he said, look, you know, I can't be everywhere. You know, other people have to do this. I can't be the only one doing it. No, he said that as a general pronouncement to the, the whole workshop, but I took it seriously, you know, and I said, okay. And um, I was still working as a body worker and a, uh, and a facial esthetician, makeup artist. And then my studio, and then my studio where I was working had a drum in it. And then, you know, about a half a year later, there was two drums in there, and then there were three drums in there. And pretty soon, the drums pushed out my clientele, and I never expected to teach. I just was in love with what I was doing and I was just like excited about it. And 
Uh, every opportunity I got a chance to play with people, I was out there playing with people wherever it was, you know. And so somebody said to me one day, well, can you teach me what you know? And in 1994, I started my first class, January 1994. So so this, this to me, it seems like the, the archetype of the, the way teaching is often or was, was often done where there's something you want to learn. You sit at the feet of the master. In this case, you receive a meteorite. You wait 32 years. You meet the master. You suck. The master takes you on, gives you everything, gives you all of the knowledge, all of the love, all of the confidence. And then one day, like, puts his hand on your shoulder and you're like, and he's like, now you, now you will go and you will spread the message. Is it, was it a little bit like that or? Yeah, it was yeah. like that. It was like I had his phone number in New York. He was living in New York at the time. And I got my first job working in a daycare center where they were going to do, they wanted to do a program for kids. And uh, I didn't know anything about it. And I called him on the phone and I said, Baba, they asked me to do this job teaching in a daycare center. He said, of course, you go do that. Of course, you go do that. That's your job. That's what you're supposed to do. So yeah, he stood behind me from the very first moment that the doors began to open. And believe me, if you are um, a person who is a perfectionist the way I am, and you know that you're you're on the on on a scale of suckage, you know at least what can I say? You know, I'm starting drumming at forty at age forty. I'm not starting when I'm ten years old or five years old like the little djembe folas do in Africa. I'm starting when I'm already a mature person, you know, who's got a body who's had some wear and tear. So, um, but he said, yeah, you go do that. That's, that's good. And then, you know, and, and then all of a sudden the jobs just opened up and I was going, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. And he said, yeah, you do because it's happening. So, I spent the first 10 years apologizing for being white. I apologized to everybody. I'm sorry. I love the drum. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm stepping on your toes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because it is very much what we call cultural appropriation in today's world. And, um, but when you have a passion for something that takes you out of your culture, it takes you out of your culture and just says, no, you go here. You, this is what you do. What are you going to do? You're going to deny the call of spirit. That's the way spirit was showing up for me at that particular moment. The spirit was saying, you're going to be a drummer and you're going to teach lots and lots of people. And so that's what happened. I started out just having classes in my house and then Little by little, the word got out, and little by little, I mean, I, I told, taught hundreds of people, and everybody is the same who feels this call, because it is a call of spirit. It's a call for unity. It's a call for something to bring us together, despite our deceivingly apparent, because it's not true, differences. It's, it, it's something that is a focusing point. Like, you know, uh, my husband's a meditator. He's a really intense, he loves his meditation practice. For me, drumming is the same as meditation. He would say no. But for me, it is because it takes me to that same place where I'm connected to everybody and everything that's going on in this perimeter. It's, it's happening. And when I see the joy on people's faces, that's a real indication that spirit has entered into the into the place. It isn't not me, Zarina, the drummer, doing it. It is the act of connecting everybody to the one spirit that we all are, which happens, boom, on the drum, boom, every time you hit a note, boom. Everybody connects to that. They focus on it the same way you focus on your breath when you're meditating, whether you're aware of it or not. Because to drum, you have to have focus. Because if you don't, you lose the rhythm. So the act of drumming is an act of 
mindful connection to, in this case, not a mantra or, but it is to a, a rhythm that you're going to carry forward. You're going to carry it forward and you're going to continue to put it out there. And then boom, everybody can connect to that rhythm. Everybody can connect to it. I want to go into that a little bit because you start talking about that feeling of unity and I just, you know, I love that. I get all, I get kind of like lost in it. I'm like, oh, that's so great. But then you really grounded it. And, and I want to make sure that I capture the way in which you grounded it because it's different for drumming and maybe for your understanding of rhythm than for all the other techniques we have of getting there. So does it have to do with the sound of every hit of the drum or is it like, help me understand that? It, it is not just the sound of the drum, but it's the intention that you're lifting up your hand, you're dropping your hand, and out comes this sound, right? But in order for it to happen again, you have to lift up your hand. So the entire act of it is an act of mindfulness and being present. You cannot drum if you're not being present. That's what I love about it. It stopped the voice in my head. You know, it stopped it. The first time I had an experience of the drum drumming me. So let's say that. There was silence inside. And there was this feeling of something just happening on its own. But there was absolute stillness inside. And that's the thing that hooked me. Like that feeling of like, it's not emptiness. It's rich. It's rich connection with the absolute, you know, and I would never use those words in a drumming class, but that's what it is. It's like in that moment, there's no Zarina playing the drum. There's just this thing happening. And if I connect you to it, and you and you and you, all the possible yous out there in the world, all of a sudden we are one. No matter what our individual point of view is politically or economically or whatever it is going on in this one moment that where we're playing together, where the rhythm is going on, we are actually in a state of oneness. Yeah. And that's yeah. what turns me on. Just, yeah. in just literally in time. In time. Right. So it requires this. I, I say like the, there's these, there's these things that you need to be a drummer, a good drummer an adequate drummer. One is technique. In other words, spending enough time with the instrument to learn how to make the sounds so that they sound consistent. So they sound the same every time. And the other is like this focus. And it's kind of like, um, it's not one pointed. It's, it's more diffuse. It's more like a open spatial awareness that you're able to keep your concentrated energy going so that you can continue to make these sounds on the drum. You can continue to move your body back and forth. So that requires a sort of a focus. That's why one of the reasons I don't like teaching children, not because I don't like teaching children, but because I don't want to force them into having to be that precise. You know, I want kids around the drum and then if they want to pick up the drum, fine. And then I'll show them. But I don't want to put them into that state of mind where you have to keep that focused awareness. I want their, their, like my son grew up with the drum and he, from the time he was three years old, four years old, all he heard was drumming. And Baba was at our house and, you know, there was all that kind of like wonderful enrichment going on. And so, for him, the same way you would learn a foreign language, drumming is his foreign language. And he learned it at a very early age. So it's not like he has to work on his technique because he has technique because he got it. He got that mind-body connection. So um, with children, you want them to be receiving it, but not having unless that is their proclivity. You know, I've seen some kids that are just, they're drummers. They're like three, four years old and they are drummers. And you're not going to keep a drum from them. And in that case, you give them the drum and you give them something simple to do. And hopefully you have a drum community that can support them. 
by bringing them to events and all those kinds of things. But the idea of having to focus your mind in this way, having to keep your attention in the present moment so that the next minute you're ready to hit the drum, you're ready to hit the drum, you're ready to hit the drum, that's, that takes some discipline. That takes some discipline. And, and to, you know, maybe it's analogous to meditation and there's techniques, but like, let's say you're in the middle of this pattern and a thought comes, a distraction. How do you address that? Well, it becomes very much like meditation when you have a good practice in that the thoughts become like clouds. They come and they go. Most of my students, I would say that they can't sustain a thought and the thought take them somewhere without losing the rhythm. At this point, you know, I'm watching the, the group, I'm watching the rhythms, I'm listening to this, I'm watching the people in the room and their hands on the drum. I'm watching so many things and thoughts are going through my mind that are saying, oh, do this rhythm next or teach this next because this is dovetailed very nicely. So I am thinking, but it's more like, it's like a stream of consciousness thing that's going on. Uh, and if I was thinking too much, yeah, I would get distracted from the rhythm that I'm playing and not be capable of playing it. So it is like very much like following your breath. You're following your breath. You're following the rhythm. So you need a certain amount of skill to do that. And But the biggest thing is your willingness. Okay, yeah, great. So that gets back to another question I had. You know, you're talking about everyone who's involved in this drumming then becomes part of this experience of unity here. You're in the same time together. Yeah. And your first experience of it was not as a active participant with the drum, but as a listener. So this experience is also available to a mere listener. Absolutely. That's why that's why they have CDs and records and everything that you want to you want to listen to drum music now. Just Google YouTube. You know. J- drummers and you can listen to music from every culture around the world you know i got drawn to african drumming because baba was my first introduction to this but then through him you know i learned about korean drumming and brazilian drumming and other forms of of drumming and rhythmic practice which we'll talk about more in detail um that don't have anything to do with the drum which you do with your body um, which have been what I would say they're all part of the same family. This, so I want to complete my thought because I said, I said focus and technique. And the third thing is the f- learning rhythms and being able to retain them. Oh, there's another one, stamina. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a difference being able to do those things for five minutes and for two hours. Yeah, you know, and and right now, like, I'm on my little sabbatical, so I haven't been playing. But, you know, I can play if I have to, you know, if I had a performance or something, I could play for two or three hours. That takes me going to the gym and working out and, you know, all that kind of This is really upper body work, core work, because when you're holding on to the drum, you're doing it with your core. So, you know, all of those things go into the mechanics of drumming. And then there's, are you doing free form, just drum circle, happy, go lucky, just wailing on the drum? Or are you going down some specific ethno, ethno specific uh, trail where you're learning Cuban or, or West African, or like we have a lot of people in, in Squim that are into Zimbabwe and music with the, with the balafon and marimba so all of that is all part of that same under that same heading of rhythmic practices or percussion but i fell into this stream this olatunji stream and what i love about that stream is you got the whole deal you got you learned how to dance you saw the connection between dancing and drumming that this is not some like well the drummers are over here and the dancers are over here no it's one art and so with Baba, you had to learn all of it. You had to, you had to be, you had to learn how to multitask, you know, and uh, by singing and playing the drum at the same time. You had to learn how to, you had to learn how to pay attention to what are the dancers doing? What am I playing on the drum that is supporting the dancers? 
because we're not separate. We're not separate, even though it is an instrument, and this is an instrument. The body is an instrument. So that's like a little deep dive into that, you know, what got me going in that in that realm. And um, then I went to Africa three times, studied in Africa for, you know, periods of time. Um, that was funny because the first time I went, they taught me rhythms one way. And then I came back two years later and they said, oh, you're back again. And then they showed me the rhythms a different way. It was kind of like white person version one, white <laughs> person version two. So the same rhythms, just like a yeah, different it's vocabulary. Like, well, they can't handle it yet. <laughs> they can't handle the, you know, the, the truth yet. So we'll just give them the easy stuff. And, and to some extent, Baba was like that. His music was simplistic. And um, uh, he adapted traditional music so that the Western audience would understand it. Because traditional West African music, some of it's very complex and kind of like, kind of like post Parker jazz. It's very complicated and complex and not always enjoyable unless you're trained to that ear. Kind of like Middle Eastern music to some extent too. If you don't, if you don't know what you're looking, listening to, it can just sound like camels. You know, I mean, really, it, it is an acquired taste. Um, but, uh, you know, I feel like it's, it's one of the, the most incredibly healing paths for, for humans is participating with each other. It's just amazing to me that people really are yearning for ways to connect to each other in nonverbal forms. And drumming is instant satisfaction. You go like this, boom, and you make a sound. There's no delayed gratification, you know, you know but if then if it grabs you, which it did with me, then you start down the path of learning. And then it's getting yourself a good drum, or getting a drum that sounds good, um, uh, that you like the sound of, and then spending, I like to say, five minutes three times a week, because people can manage five minutes three times a week. If you tell them they need to practice for an hour, they're never going to do it, unless they're, they're already sold on it, and then you don't have to tell them to do anything anyhow. Yeah, something you said a minute ago, people are yearning to connect this nonverbal form that uh, it rings so true to me. But I, I think it's even true when we're trying to connect verbally. It's like we're, we're trying to use these words, not necessarily to agree on an idea, but just to have this experience of connection. And so often the words we're using end up getting in the way and working against our deeper intention you know, misunderstanding, conflict, all that stuff. So yeah, I like, I like the, the kind of purity of connecting through sound. Yeah, because drumming doesn't require that you agree with anything, just that you join. Joining and, is... And there's a certain agreement about the time, right? Like you've got a, yes, <laughs> time. Yeah, that's another one of those really serious things that you have to pay attention to. Like, you know, you go to a drum circle and... People have two rhythm, two rhythmic speeds, fast and faster. And I, I you know, I, I, I love drum circles for what they are as a means of getting people into drumming. But I don't necessarily always love the music that's created. Because I like there to be an intention behind what we're doing. And if you're just, you know, randomly making sounds, well, that's really good. That's really good for self-expression. But it doesn't, for me, have that same kind of feeling of connection that it does if we're learning a rhythm and we're learning to play that rhythm together. So speaking of that, we're going to do something like that together in a little bit. But before we get into that, I just have to ask, because you brought it up at the beginning, about being driven and coming from a family that was driven with your brothers and your parent or your mother's initial reaction to your obsession with the drum. How has that evolved? Like, 
Is, is your mother, like at some point, did she come around? Oh my God. She, my mother was so proud of me. She was, she started coming to my classes when she would come and visit me in California. And she'd say, if I was your age, I would be doing this too. You know? I mean, she, my mother, my mother was a real firecracker and um, the queen of it. We have a, a cup. Of, I have a cup, my mother's cup, a uh, coffee cup, and it says queen of fucking everything. And that's because she is. Yeah, it was uh, such a big departure for me to go from this very lovely healing arts. Ooh, aromatherapy. Ooh, facial world to bam, 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 you know, and, uh, so it, it, you know, mom started coming to the classes and she was just, she was, she, she met Baba. She, she was really, really thrilled by what she saw me capable of doing, which was in one hour, if nobody had ever touched the drum before, I could get a group of people to play together. I knew how to do it. I knew how to get people past their discomfort with being beginners, get them relaxed enough into their, into that sense of wonder and childlike uh, curiosity to drop the, their persona for an hour and just be a beginner and learn that by playing together, you get more done than by isolating yourself and being the lone ranger, you know, or the desperado, you know, who's got to have his own say or whatever. It doesn't work in group drumming. You have to, you have to harmonize. You have to synchronize. You have to. And uh, there's a thing in nature, which they, um, there was a, a study done with a clockmaker in the late 1800s or somewhere in the 1800s. I can't remember the name of the guy. But it was this whole thing about oscillating members or, you know, probably going to forget the scientific term. But basically, he was a clockmaker, and he had a clock on one wall, and he had a clock on another wall, and the pendulums were swinging differently, right? But then he put them both on the same wall, and what he noticed was the pendulums began to swing together. So he went, well, this is really interesting. He took it off the wall and put it on the other wall again. Nope, they're oscillating differently. Put them together. And then from there, we discovered this very simple scientific thing called synchronization, which is there has to be an oscillating member. Um, no, the pendulum is the oscillating thing. The wall is the frequency, is, allows the frequency of the, the clocks to begin to synchronize. So, but what's, what's fascinating about that is this is an inanimate object. These are clocks. So then the question is, well, how does this work with humans? Well, humans are the only animals that are capable of resisting synchronization. Now, there's a good side to that, which is that's where creativity comes from. But the negative side of it is what we see in the world right now, where there is these very violently opposing different points of view that are vehemently being spread out into the world, you know, and everybody believing their point of view. And so there is no synchronization right there. So even when you go out at night, you know, and you listen to the frogs or the crickets, if they are close enough to each other, they will synchronize. So that's how innate synchronization is to us. And what's so interesting is that's how innate, that's how interesting it is when we refuse to synchronize. We're actually really connected. We just forget. We forget over and over and over again because we're in the world of words. If we were all just drumming on the drum, it would get, pre I mean, that's too simplistic because, <laughs> you know, some of the guys I would play with would just play so freaking hard all the time. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I'm going to be the loudest one. No, I'm going to be the loudest one. No, no, forget that. How about making music together? It requires yes. an agreement with not only the tempo, that we're all going to obey the basic rules of tempo, 
more or less that we're going to stay in the same range of beats per minute or beats per second or whatever it is, but we're also going to uh, make a conscious choice to listen to each other. So that's why it's so powerful for me. Drumming and rhythm is so powerful because it takes the story out of it. I don't care what your bank account looks like. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what your pronouns are. You're in my studio. We're drumming together. We're one. You walk out the door. You're your separate personality. I'm my separate personality. But for that hour and a half, damn it, we are healing together as a culture. And that's that's what's kept me going all these years. And the joy of it, the joy of seeing people come to life like that, the joy of seeing people connect to their, what we'd say, our true nature, which is to be in harmony with each other, which is to be connected to each other. Yeah. So th- you can see, I get very, I get very evangelical about it. Not in, not in a bad way, in a good way. No, in a, in a perfect way. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I want to offer, or I want to ask you to offer a little gift, another gift to our, to our listeners, which is a rhythm experience. So I'm going to call it, you, you might have a better name for it. And I wonder if you could describe it a little bit. So we're going to do a rhythm meditation. After I'd been drumming for about eight years, I realized that there was something missing for me in terms of my understanding of how to leave rhythm, express myself freely, which we call soloing, and join rhythm again. And I would get lost and kind of crash and burn. And it was painful because I couldn't leave the rhythm. I couldn't express myself outside of the rhythm. And so I got turned on to this guy named Reinhard Flatischler, who founded a work called Takatina. And it it is basically learning rhythm in your body, taking the drum out of it, although you can use a drum to do it too, but taking the drum out of it and finding the rhythms in your body and embodying them. And that's what we're going to do. But where I've taken it away from Takatina, Takatina has a specific form. It has lots and lots of layers of experience. You do this, then you do this, then you do this, then you do this. What I did was I distilled the essence of what happens in the circle into some very, very basic practice. One is You're stepping a rhythm. You're stepping into a rhythmic form. You find out what's between one step and the other. That's what we call subdivision pulsation. So your step is the pulsation. What's going on between one foot going down and the other foot going down is called a subdivision pulsation. Fancy terms, which you can forget as soon as this podcast is over. And the third thing is called offbeats or double time. They're just another way of looking at what's inside the rhythm between one step and another and how we can shape it, how we can formulate it. Third thing, ninth thing, 20th thing is cycle. In other words, when you start the rhythm and then you end the rhythm, how much time has gone on? So I'll give you a simple example of a cycle is an hour, right? With a clock, we, if you have an, uh, an analog clock, you can watch the hands going around the clock. You know what an hour is. So a cycle is a, a measurement of time that's going to stay consistent. It's a rhythmic pattern that's going to stay consistent. So what we're going to do in this, in this very simple exercise, And I had to give Reinhard Flatterschler credit because he's the one who taught me. We're going to hook into rhythm with our bodies and take all learning out of the mental realm. So you're not worried anymore about your technique, about your hand hooking up, about is this a goon go do pata? Is it a goon pata pata? We're we're not worrying about any of the songs, song lines. 
the rhythm lines. Instead, we're just going to go to the simplest rhythm possible, which is two. All right? Two is yes and no. Black and white, duality, this and that, self and other. So it's the simplest thing we know. And we have to make our cycle big enough that it makes sense to sing over so we can sing over and get a re response back. And that way, it gives you the time to hear the song and then go, oh, this is the way the song sounds, and then re repeat the song. I don't know if that makes any sense. I think it will when we get started. Okay. So you know that you need to mute yourself in order for us to do this, right? Yes. All right. So I'm going to put on my ankle bells. And I put on the ankle bells so I can hear myself stepping. Yeah, yes. For those of you in the audience, you can hear my ankle bells. Okay. And we're going to use two tools. And one is a shaker. This is an egg shaker. And that has a very gentle sound. This is a, another kind of egg shaker. It's actually a triangle. Here's a very loud one. We're not going to use the loud one, but I'm just giving you an array of sounds. Here's another kind of one, really lovely. This is a kashishi from Brazil. And then we're going to also use a clicker. Now, this is a child's castanet. You can get them on online for like a couple of bucks. And it makes a wonderful, wonderful sound because these two sounds... The shaking sound has an ambient sound. It does something very interesting to your brain this, because it's not actually precise. It has an afterglow. In other words, you, you start it, it has a sound. You hear how it, it's not just precise. And then here's the clicker. So that is one sound only. I'm going to find another kind of clicker, too, because I just want to show you. So this clicker is a, a thumb. It's called a thumb. Uh, in, in the Ghanaian tradition, it's called grelo. It's also called other things, but it's basically a thumb clicker. So what we're going to do, you guys ready out there in... So I'm going to start, first of all, as you begin this exercise, please allow yourself to close your eyes. And for a moment, allow yourself to feel your entire body. And whether it's clear or it's not clear, just give yourself this moment to arrive. And it may help you to feel your feet on the floor and imagine that at the bottoms of the soles of your feet, you can send energy down down into the earth, down into the floor. And as you feel your feet going down, that energy moving down into the floor, I'd like you to put your attention at the top point of your head and imagine a thread or a a wire coming out of the top of your head and connecting you to that which is above you. And whether it's clear or not, it's fine. 
So you feel your feet on the floor. You feel that place in your head connecting you to what is above you. Maybe connecting out to the furthest star you might see in an evening sky. And you'll hear some rhythm syllables. And they don't have to make any sense. You can just bring them into your voice. Ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki. And please say these syllables. Ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki. As I'm saying them. Ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta. And you're going to start with a ta on the right foot, ta. On the left foot, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki. Right foot goes down, then the left foot goes down. Ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki. And then the rattle wakes up. Ta, ki, ta, ki, ta. And as the rattle makes up, it makes its rattling sound. Ta, ki, ta. And then finally the rattle is awake and it's going to go with the feet. Ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki. So the foot and the rattle go down together. Ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, ki. Key. Now, where is the key, I'm going to ask you, is between one foot and the other. That's where the key is. So we're going to sing, and we're going to cover this territory. We're going to make a map of this territory with our voices. So when you're ready, right foot goes down, then the left foot goes down, the rattle goes down, and the rattle goes down. Ta, key, ta, key, key. Here we go. Ta ki ta ki. And then you answer back. Ta ki ta ki. Rattle, rattle. Step, step. Step, space, step, space. Talky, 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 talky. Hey, bamba, just singing back what I sing to you. Hey, bamba, talk. Taki 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 Key Key First off beat Key Key Did you lose your footstep? Taki Taki Come back to the mantra again Taki Taki Hey, go, bamba. We're going to go a little tiny bit faster. Talky, talky. Here we go. That's more comfortable. Talky, talky. Key, key. That's after the rattle. Rattle key, rattle key. Just to tell you where you are. Key, 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 key. Here we come back. Talky, talky. Coming back to our home base. Talky, talky. Hey, go, bamba. Hey, go, bamba, yeah. Hey, go, bamba. 
Feel it in your body. Chalky, chalky. Rattle, rattle. Rattle, rattle. Space, space. Again, between the footsteps. Space, space. Chalky, chalky. Chalky, chalk. Chalky, chalky. Now we're going to find the key before the one. Chalky, chalk. Key, key. Key, key. Did you get lost? Key, key. Chalky, chalky. Coming back to the one again. Chalky, chalky. Let's try double time. Chalky, 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 ta. Just doubling the time we have. Chalky, 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 ta. Keeping our body the same, though. Chalky, 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 ta. Using the voice to fluctuate. Chalky, 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 ta. Chalky, key, chalky, ta. Chalky, key, chalky, ta. Key, chalky, chalky, ta. Blinding spots and key, chalky, chalky, ta. Little spots in space. Chalky, chalky. Chalky, chalky. Let's try the double time again. Here we go. Chucky, 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 cha. Now we'll call all the ta's, right? Ta, 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 ta. Do it again. Here we go. Ta, 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 ta. Your turn. Stay in your body. Ta, 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 ta. Now we'll call all the keys. Key, 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 key. Yeah, that's fun. Key, 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 key. Stay in the rhythm. Key, 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 key. Key, 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 key. Yeah, coming back to the one. Talky, talky. Talky, talky. Talky, talky. Very good. Talky, talky. Now let's let the rattle, chalky, chalky, get softer. Chalky, chalky. And please go back to speaking. Chalky, chalky, chalky. And let the rattle rattle. Get all that energy out of the rattle. Chalky, 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 chalky. Now, we were pointing to the key with our voice before. You're still speaking, going ta, ki, ta. And we're still with our right foot and our left foot. And now this time you're going to use your clicker. And your clicker is going to be on the key. So I'm going to put my rattle in my back pocket because I'm going to use my hand that had the rattle to point out the key first. So I know it's not on my step. I know it's key, key, key. It's right there, key between one step and the other. Key, 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 key. key. And when I have it in my voice, it's going to be very easy, key, key, to bring it into a click. Key, ta, key, ta, key. Now we have the clicker. Taki, taki. Hey, go, hey, go. Step, click, and step, and click. Step, click, step, click. Step, click, step, click. Step, click. Step, click, or what we call 
ta ki ta ki now ta is on our foot ta ki ta ki and ki is in our clicker ta ki ta ki step click step click step click step click step click step click that's just to let you know where we are step click step click key 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 or we could say click and click click and click click and click we're on the off beat talk key talk key coming back to the beat again talk key talk key talk key talk key step 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 click step click step 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 click step click just calling what is click click or i could call it go 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 talky 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 now i'm just going to cover up talky 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 with other syllables hey go bamba hey go bamba ya go bamba Go le bambaya. Don't do this when you're driving. Go bamba. Talky, talky. Notice how I always come back, talky, talky, to the mantra. Talky, talky. I do that to locate myself. Key, talky, in space and time. Go bamba, a go go bamba ya. Random song that has meaning. A go go bamba lele, a go bamba. I'm singing ki ta ki. That's what I'm really singing when I go. A go bamba. It's all code. Ki. Key, 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 key. Now let's find the ta, ta, ta. Feel how different that is. It's in the beat, ta, ta. Last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find ta, ta. The key before the one, ta, ta. Key, key. Where are we now? Key, key. Key, key. Coming back home. Talk, key, talk, key. Talk, key, talk, key. Let's do double time. Talk, key, talk, key, talk, key, ta. I love double time. Tucky, 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 ta. Tucky, key, tucky, ta. Tucky, 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 ta. Tucky, key, key, key. Tucky, key, key, key. You can feel it in your body. It feels good. Key, 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 key. Chucky, 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 ta. Chucky, 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 ta. Key, key, chucky, ta. 
Chalky, key, key, key. Key, key, chalky, ta. Chalky, 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 ta. And chalky, chalky. That's our mantra coming back home. Chalky, chalky. Chalky, chalky. So take your chalky, chalky. Time, talky, talky, and please go back to your voice again. Speaking, talky, 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 and get that rattle out again. Talky, talky. Now remember, this is the simplest of all forms, so there isn't a polyrhythm that goes with it. There's only single time and double time, and if you need to <clears throat> get further information from me, you can always contact me on the web or send a flare or whatever. And remember that this is not a linear process, meaning this is something you experience being in rhythm. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that original thing with the rattle on the top, and we're going to keep the clicker on the key. Ta, key, ta, key. So now you are a talky talky, a one person band, talky talky. And to just kind of close out this exercise, key talky. We'll sing, hey bamba, just some songs, hey le bamba. We can always go back to the mantra, hey bamba. Go lay bamba. Go, go lay. Go lay bamba. Go, go lay. Go lay bamba. Hey, go. Hey, let go. Hey, go. Hey, le bamba. Just for our own fun. Ki taki. Finding the mantra in this. Taki taki. Taki taki. A coco bamba ya. Go go bamba lele. Go bamba. If you like, go lay bamba. You can close your eyes. Hey bamba. Start to take this information. Lay bamba to your insides. Go lo le palio. Go go le pale ole. Just singing, go le bambaya, songs of the rhythm. Go go bamba lele, hey go go bamba lele. Allow yourself, go go bamba lele, to relax. Go go bambaya, go go bambaya. Rattle click, rattle click. Step, rattle, step, click. Sorry, step, click, step, click. Step, click, and step, and click. Talky, talky. Now allow all. Talky, talky. All your movements. Talky, talky. To get a little smaller. Talky, talky. As you do, talky, talky. You can allow your rattle, talky, talky, and your clicker, talky, talky, to get softer, talky, talky. And I invite you, talky, talky, to take, talky, talky. A moment or two. 
Gita, Gita. Just close your eyes. Gita, Gita. And to go into stillness in your body. Gita, Gita. And just let yourself feel. Gita, Gita. Listen, hear. Gita, Gita. But more than anything, feel. Gita, Gita, Gita. How this rhythm has. Gita, Gita. Taking you on a journey. Gita, Gita. Into yourself. Gita, Gita. Into rhythm, which is always there. Gita, Gita. Gita, Gita, Gita. Gita, Gita, Gita. Take a moment to go still. And just listen. Taki, 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 ta. If you can, sit down. Taki, 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 ta. Or stand still. Taki, 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 ta. Taki, 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 ta. Taki, 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 ta. And if we were in the studio, taki, taki. I would invite you to lie down taki, taki. to just feel into your body. Taki, 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 ta. taki, taki. Dole bamba. Dole bamba. Gulamba, 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 Gulamba. While you're lying or sitting or standing still, just notice how you feel in this moment. This very simple rhythmic journey into duality. And you'll hear the sound of a chime. Allow yourself all the time you need to come back. Taking your time. Stretching. Maybe finding one word or two words that might you might share how you feel after going on this little rhythm meditation with your clicker, your shaker, and your body. You got a word, Ankor? Ankor? Relaxed. Hmm. My word is grateful. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Serena. Thank you for sharing that gift with us. Thank you, and I hope it translates through the medium of podcasting. I'm sure it will. I'm really sure it will. That concludes another episode of the 10,000 Heroes podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And thank you to our guest, Serena Wolf. 
Your hosts are Ankur Shah Delight and Nathan Ramos. Thanks to Pierre for the awesome episode artwork and to DJ Plainview for our theme music. Thanks also to our audio editor, Martin Santagada. If you like the show and you want to support our mission and our growth, there's a couple of things you can do. The main one is to reach out and let us know how the show has contributed to your life and how our show could further contribute to your life. That really helps us. Once you've done that, the next best thing is to share the episodes that touch you with people you think would also resonate. It's that simple. Share the love. And once again, thank you for listening and take care. Good care.